people die, but sometimes there are big questions. How does a, a young 23-year-old lady just die, develops a headache out of nowhere, apparently out of nowhere, and it just deteriorates until she dies? We are in Tanshwandu. Progress is in the hands of the people. As tonight, my comment is on the death of the young Abigail uh, Mulenga. This has to have some questions attached to it. Um, people die, sure. But 23 year olds just don't die. Apparently, healthy 23 year olds. When you look at this picture right here, that lady does not strike me as somebody who's sick or who is got something wrong going on underneath. You know, sometimes you never know. But even when there is, the age typically overwhelms uh, uh, the chances of, you know, premature death. And uh, she's only 23 years old, or she's 23 years old. And um, so the big questions for me, this is very sad. It's, it's really sad. I'm really saddened by, by the loss of this young lady. She was uh, apparently deployed as an intern. She's, she, they're calling her a doctor. Uh, she probably was not a doctor at the time. She was interning or she was in an apprenticeship program, probably. Um, but whatever the case is, she was at uh, Cowboy General Hospital. And uh, that's where she was working at. And she began to come down with a headache. As I understand the story, she began to, she began to come, up, come down with a headache and it was getting worse and worse and worse. Question is, she was working for a hospital. What did they do? If a head, somebody begins to develop a headache to the point that they're becoming incap incapacitated by the headache, they're not in a coma yet, but they're becoming incapacitated by the headache. That is what is called an emergency. That began to happen with this lady days, days before she, had, she died. Days. Many days before she died. And uh, there are doctors there, other doctors at the hospital. Obviously, she was admitted. She was seen at the hospital. And that's why eventually, obviously, uh, she was transferred to Lusaka. Somebody had to make the decision. But when somebody... So this is the kind of thing that bothers me. That all of us as citizens need to think about okay let me let me turn something on here because i want to make a very relevant a very pertinent comment here um let me see here if i can uh bring up a window okay there it is here's a window of a story this is a story um, let's see here okay this is doctor the government sending condolences the government sends condolences a message of condolences to the family of the late dr abigail muleng the government has sent a message of the message of a message of sympathies and condolences to the family of the late Dr. Abigail Mulenga, who died at the UTH at 18:30 hours yesterday. By yesterday, they mean um, the August 24th. Health Minister Chilukatali, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Chitalu Chirufia, said the late Dr. Mulenga was a highly committed medical practitioner who worked with the Ministry of Health for the last two months, two months, just two months, and showed her diligence and dedication. 
allow me today to express my sympathies and condolences to the family of the late Dr. Abigail Melenga, our, th our 23 year old intern who died last evening. The young lady had suffered from some headaches, from some headaches, and had been unwell for more than a week and succumbed yesterday, 1830. Dr. Mulenga was a highly committed practitioner, medical practitioner who worked with the Ministry of Health for the last two months and showed her diligence and dedication to duty in a short period of time. Today, we express deep sympathies to the family and the dark cloud covers the health sector as we have lost a gallant, a gallant young fighter, said doc, Dr. Chirufia. He said, yeah, he said, investigations conducted thus far have not confirmed if her death was COVID-19 related. The investigations, in quotation, quote, the investigations we have done so far have not yet confirmed that the death all was COVID related. But so far, what we have picked are comorbidities and these comorbidities have been investigated thoroughly and noted, and noted hassle rest in peace, the minister says. If you're wondering what comorbidities are, comorbidities is referring to the presence of one, uh, the presence of two or more um, uh, uh, medical conditions in, in a person. That's what he's referring to as comor comorbidities. So now, here, coming back, here, here is condolences, she's dead, she's not coming back. Here is where we have to what what we have to think be thinking about as as citizens. If this lady, that young lady right there, she just came back from Russia. I want you to think about this. If she had been in Russia, there there's over ninety percent chances that she should still be alive right now. If whatever afflicted her, if that's natural, if whatever afflicted her, I'm assuming it's natural, if whatever afflicted her happened in Russia, she'd probably be alive right now. Here's why. Here's why I'm going to explain here. And this is what we have to think about when we think about development. Development. Development is not building a useless bridge that goes within the city about a couple kilometers from this point within the city to here with no economic value. It's not wasting millions of dollars building something from one point, little point in a city to a little point in a city, making no difference whatsoever in the economic, uh, in the economics of the country. If you build, build something from Chilanga and swing it around Lusaka and end up in Chisamba, you have just created a, an inf a piece of infrastructure of economic value because trucks and vehicles that do not have to pass through Lusaka will not have to. Once they get to south of Chilanga, they get on the freeway. Then they go around, right around the city and drop off in Chisamba and go, continue on their way. That's what, it, that's what decongestion is. What they built, what they opened is useless. Here is what I'm, here is what I'm talking about that. You keep, we are celebrating that useless thing. Then we for, don't think about what is really important in people's lives. Such as when is our when when are our people in the medical profession going to realize what an emergency is? When are their attitudes attitudes going to align going to be aligned in terms of training, in terms of medical equipment that's available to them, in terms of early diagnosis, catching something before it gives someone, in terms of 
a serious response to an emergency, to a medical condition, so that it is no longer a threat to, to somebody's life. That is what an emergency response is. Eliminating, getting somebody out of the woods, getting somebody out of the danger of death. As citizens, are we there in our country? The answer is no. These are the things that we need to be thinking about when you think about development. These are the things that you think about when you hear people that say, I live in Europe, I live in the United States, I live in Ireland. They are able to pick up a phone call and say, hey, my child or my whoever has this headache that won't stop. An ambulance shows up in five minutes, in 10 minutes, gets them out, and they do whatever it takes to get that person out of danger of death. Now, let me ask you this. When this lady was there, this lovely lady was there in Kabwe, what did they do there? Maybe somebody can tell me. Maybe some, I, mean, I don't know. Did they do a CAT scan? Did anybody ask, where is this headache coming from? Could it be an aneurysm? A slow aneurysm? Just in case you don't know about an aneurysm, is an aneurysm is a small ruptured blood vessel in the in the brain that is you know beginning to to, to to you know ooze blood slowly it's oozing blood and it depends on your age at her age 23 it will be very slow because the body is fighting to to reroute because she's young the brain will try to reroute that capillary capillary before it, it it can cause any more damage it's fighting to do it's rerouting the 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 the, 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 the um, the body has amazing abilities, especially when you are a young person. Could, did somebody, did this ever occur to anybody that it could be an aneurysm? And if so, or could there be a silent, a silent stroke? Whatever could, do, could have caused it at an age, very unlikely at an age of 23 years old, but a headache that is of that seriousness that does not just occur. A headache that keeps getting up killing you, it doesn't just occur. Typically, it, it's that? Something wrong with the blood vessels? Or you have a serious head of meningitis? The menin your meninges are messed up somehow? And uh, people die from these things. All of us can die from these things. But my question is, who had the hospital in Kawe, did anybody think of this thing? If they did, did they think of doing a CAT scan on her brain? Did they think of doing a, a, an MR, MRI? That's a magnetic resonance imaging of her brain to see what's going on. Or at least a CAT scan. I, I, I assume we don't have that kind of equipment here in Zambia. We don't have, maybe we have only so many MRI machine, maybe, maybe there may not be one in Kabul. Uh, did, but did anybody think of that? If they didn't think of that, what do you think of? How do you attend to an emergency of this magnitude? If you are doctors and you can't think of um, why is this person having such a headache that is beginning to incapacitate her? Why? These are the questions that need to be asked. She deteriorated, the headache get, got worse, and she went to Lusaka. What did they do in Lusaka? Did they do a CAT scan? A CAT scan? I don't know. Nobody's talking. Did they do an MRI to find out what was going on in the headache? Probably not. Did they, if 
at least if they don't do an MRI or a cut and go to, to, to see what's going on in our brain, somebody can suspect, well, this can be an aneurysm. This can be a blood vessel. Why don't you put her on heparin? Did they put her on heparin? Probably not. So, she's dead now. For the most part, because of an incompetence, the incompetence in our system. We don't know what an emergency is, guys. We don't know what an emergency is. I am not saying you can't die even when there is a good emergency response. But in our country, we are very far from what it takes to attend to an emergency. There could have been people who could have been Ah. Uh, you know, and I, I'm serious. What I'm going to say right now is very, very serious. Someone need to, to do a toxicology report, uh, a, 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 a toxicology analysis on the young lady. They need to do a toxicology analysis on this young lady. It, it is possible she could be, have been poisoned. It is possible. I don't know what comorbidities he, is this minister is, is referring to. There may be sure she, she may have some underlying things that can, you know, culminated in such complications. But we don't know. That's the problem. One of the problems that we have in Zambia. Nobody knows what, when somebody dies. Nobody comes out and says, "Oh, she died of this." What does the postmortem say? She died of this. You, you hardly ever hear of such things. It's it's very important that people know what killed somebody. Somebody that is significant. Somebody, what did she? What killed her? What caused the headache? Headache is a symptom. What caused people don't die of a headache? <laughs> it, it, it's funny. It, it sounds funny. People don't die of a headache. They died of whatever caused the headache. Her headache doesn't kill anybody. It's what's causing it. That kills you. So what caused her headache? Is it a toxin? Is it an aneurysm? Is it a stroke? Is it an acute case of meningeal inflammation? What is it? So anyway, that's my that 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 that's 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 my comment, people. It's um, this this is a sad this is this is a real sad this is a sad story, but I just wanted to make that comment and uh, hopefully it makes sense to somebody. All right, rest in peace, Abigail. Rest in peace. As we are in Tanshubantu, if you like uh, my uh, uh, comments, uh, you can subscribe, subscribe to my channel, and uh, so you'll be notified uh, when um, I post a comment. Um, you now make sure you you, you hit the um, uh, notification bell when you sus subscribe. So um, until next time. Guys, I hope you can think about what I just said here. Very important, very important things to think about. Okay. Fellow citizens, have a good one.